sign of the airport or the runway yet. We'll see how this goes. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators, welcome back to the Finer Points. In this video, I'm bringing you along again on another actual instrument training flight. Today we're flying the Localizer Runway 2 approach into Watsonville, California. That's Whiskey Victor India for anybody that wants to follow along. This is a training flight, so even though we're flying a G1000 equipped Cessna 172, uh, being that it's a localizer approach, we are flying it with the GPS as backup only. And we did ask to fly the full approach procedure from Nalls, so you will see us execute the full procedure turn. Now, if you didn't already know it, there are two courses available for one price in our ground school app uh, both have a flight side this approach actually much more than this approach the whole planning for this flight the selecting the route the radios the flying here all of that stuff uh, will end up in the flight chapters of our instrument course and if you haven't seen the scenarios we've added there uh, just know that they're valuable for new instrument pilots but also for experienced instrument pilots that just want to see how we think through these things in actual IFR for example on this approach that you'll see us fly today uh, I like to remind pilots that that, you know you don't want to bury your head in the sand when it comes to risk so this procedure turn that we're executing uh, does take us out over the Monterey Bay there are there are clouds down there and any rescue underneath that overcast uh, has to be considered so we try to keep our altitude pretty high until we absolutely must descend inbound toward the final approach fix um, also being that there's an actual overcast and then a broken layer under it uh, we spot the runway at the last possible moment and it brings up questions about what would happen if we uh, had spotted it just a little bit too late or tried to land and realized too late that we couldn't. For this video, let's pick up this approach just outside of Nall's intersection as we're getting cleared for the instrument approach. All right, we're getting close here. So we're gonna be like a racehorse coming out of the gate. When we get to Nall's, right 198, start a timer for two minutes, hit the CDI button to the localizer. Localizer has already been identified. We'll go outbound for two minutes. Four five Papa, are you able to accept nine thousand as a final altitude? Four five Papa, club and maintain nine thousand. All right, you guys, here goes. We're gonna start this turn. One, here we go. So it's gonna be a right turn. Or two Fox truck kilo mile from Nalls, maintain four thousand till established, cleared localizer runway two approach Watsonville. Okay, maintain four thousand till established, cleared localizer runway two approach Watsonville. Thank you. One seven two Fox truck kilo. All right, so I cut that turn maybe a hair early, but whatever. What I want you guys to notice mostly is that the HSI handles any sort of what you would think of as reverse sensing, right? We're basically still flying toward the needle, and it is a localizer signal that we're flying outbound on, so that is a sensitive signal. We're going to expect that when that needle comes in, it's going to move like a localizer needle should move, right? It's pretty sensitive, so you want to be careful of these big cuts like the one I'm making at it right now. You want to try to contain that needle as soon as possible. All right, and I know uh, we may have started the time a bit early because we started the turn a little bit early, but being that we're headed offshore, I'm actually okay with that here. So we're gonna go outbound for another minute on this signal, then we'll turn around. And all we really have to be careful of is that we actually do descend and get down to the altitude we wanna be at before we arrive back at Nalls, right? But here we are bracketing. I'm going right now to a heading of 220. We'll see what that does to the needle. And remember, what we're looking for is the trend on the needle. Uh, right to X -ray radar services are so that when I get to 220, what is the trend? Is the needle trending please, back toward the center? Please, I'm not even going to 220. I'm going to go to 215 because I can tell you it is trending back toward center. Good. And when it gets toward center, maybe I split the difference and go, I don't know, 208. like that. Something right there. We'll see what that does. All right. Good. How low is 1160? How long is 412? In which way? Climbing right turn to 5000. Hey, there's our two minutes. Now it's a right turn to a heading of 243. 
and we'll do this for one minute. Right, two, four, three, turning at a standard rate. Um, we've been cleared for the approach, so we can go ahead and put in 3001 as our altimeter. Notice that as we fly away from the needle, we're getting ready to teardrop back toward, to, toward it. So as we go this way, we expect the needle to move away. And then we'll be making the left turn back onto it, right? You can see that also over here on the moving map, but you don't need the moving map to see that. Noting also right now that we're into a 14 knot wind. It's nice to have this data. So what that tells us is when we turn around, that's going to be a tailwind. We're going to get back on that course oh, a lot faster than it took us to get off of it. So I might just go hair more than a minute here because it's a double whammy. We're a little bit high. We need to get down to 2,200 feet before we're back at Nalls. So I'm going to go to like maybe 115 in this direction. Just being that I know going into the wind. We have a slower ground speed. There we go. All right, we're going to turn back toward this needle. And hopefully we don't blow through it. We're going to start the timer when we get to the final approach fix. And I'm going to begin the descent now because, well, because we have to get down to 2,200 feet in a pretty yeah, so short period Bravo of time. Turn right heading 200, veterans for Wubbo. Uh, right uh, 200, uh, 7 out, Bravo. Theoretically, this turn here would be to 063. So if we don't have the needle, we'll just go 063 that and hold it. We always turn away from the final approach fix when we're coming back to make this inbound turn because we want to have a good run at the final approach fix. So we want to make sure we don't cut ourselves short there. And we don't need extra time, but we just need all the time we can get. Okay, now when I get to, when that needle comes in, I turn on course. But when I get to Nalls, there is no turn. There is a timer to start. Um, there is Turn time twist, no twist. There is a throttle down to our MDA of 1160. Let's go ahead and put that in there. There it is. And we'll bracket this course maybe 030 for now, now 025. There we go, we'll try that. Okay. And NorCal 172 Fox Truck Kilo, procedure turn inbound. 2 Fox Truck Kilo, right? There we go. Now when we get to Nalls, there is no turn, there's a timer to start, there is no twist, there's a throttle down to the MDA, and there is a, there is no talk, as far as I know yet. All right, and I can see this great data on the MFD, right, that precision path indicator, or that uh, back vector, or the noodle, whatever we call that thing, the thing that where, the, where the airplane's gonna be in a minute is telling me exactly where I need to turn to make sure I get to the course before I get to Nalls, right? That's beautiful. I'm trying to fly 90 knots here. We'll go left to like zero, one, zero. Two five track, you know, change advisor frequencies and approved report cancellation of IFR in the air on the ground, 127.15. Okay, go into advisory and we'll report uh, cancellation with you, 172 Fox Star Kilo. Seven off, Bravo, two miles from Let's flip Maine. that over. All right, we're trying to get that needle back. My noodle's telling me that's not enough, so let's go left to 005. We don't want to lose that, right? And we want to make sure that we're going only down to the correct altitude, 2,200 nalls is six miles out. All right, when we get to nalls, there is no turn, there is a timer, there is no twist, there is a throttle, there is no talk. Okay, 2,200, we're still a mile away. No sign of the airport or the runway yet. We'll see how this goes. I um, want to be very, very precise about starting our timer and watching our ground speed. Watsonville traffic, Skyhawk 172, Fox Track Kilo, approximately uh, seven miles to the south southwest, 2,200 feet inbound on the localizer to approach Watsonville. Okay, there's our timer, and we're on course. And our ground speed's 88, so we're going to go down to 1,160 now. That's the airplane, so the mixture is rich. Um, the lights are on. We're leaving our altitude. We're within 1,000 of our altitude. 
ground speed is 92. We'll slow down a little bit. Descending 1160. 1900 descending 1160. 1,200 descending 1160. Watsonville traffic, Skyhawk 172, Foxtrot Kilo, approximately four miles south southwest, crossing the shoreline, 1,600, Watsonville. Okay, I'll turn right again, that bracket was too much, going to 014. Okay, 1,500 descending 1160, still showing 90 knots on the ground speed, so we're looking good there. On to the right yet again. Zero one six maybe. Thousand four hundred descending eleven sixty. Thousand three hundred descending eleven sixty. This is a minimum descent altitude, so we're going to stop at 1160, which is 20 feet above what the real one is as a buffer. And we're just going to motor along until we get to 4 minutes and 12 seconds, right? And it's possible, even though we have like this fog bank in front of us, right? We can't see the runway. We don't really know where it is or anything. But it's possible we're going to pop through this fog bank and boom, there it is. And as long as we're not past the missed approach point or the VDP, minimums, there really isn't a VDP on this one. Um, or it doesn't seem like we couldn't land visually, then we will go missed. But it's possible, even though we can't see anything yet, that we're still going to make this approach, right? Now, my ground, ground speed just went up to 93. I have to be careful of that. The time we have is built on... Uh, oh, there's the runway. All right, we got the runway in sight. Look at that. Opened up and beautiful. I think we can make that. All right, aviators, remember the, the whole scenario there, starting 15 minutes before this with the whole approach briefing and all that stuff will end up in the flight chapters of our Ground School app. If you haven't seen what's there, check it out. You get a free three-day trial, two courses for the price of one. There's gold nuggets on both sides, VFR and IFR. Join us for the second in our Back to School Fall webinar series on Thursday, September 26th at 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm sitting down with Jim Pittman. He's a CFI and designated pilot examiner. We're gonna talk through common check ride errors, the new CFI ACS, uh, and issues like the one we discussed in this video. It's free to attend, just follow the link below, and uh, we hope to see you there. Also, leave a comment below if there's a video you'd like to see. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the little alert bell so you get notified of uploads. But most importantly, until I see you again, be safe and fly your best.